Well, today we celebrate St. Francis. He is the patron saint of the environment, so it's a fitting time to remember how Francis taught that we are all connected through God's wonderful creation. All that God created is good, and we human beings have been given responsibility to care for the earth and for all her creatures. God has entrusted creation to us, and we make choices each day that impact our environment. And God has also given us, he's granted each of us, the capacity to be an agent of healing and of restoration for the earth. I think our job is to imagine, with God's guidance, how we can become better stewards of the environment and inspire others to learn how best to care for Mother Earth. And this is urgent work. Right now we stand at a tipping point. We have reached a precarious place as we learn more and more about the effects of global warming. For too long we have polluted creation and ignored the long-term impact of greenhouse gases. And now we are seeing the results of our complacency. You know, I don't have to tell you that things look dire. Where are we to find glimmers of hope? Well, just about two weeks ago, on September 20th, young people here in Baltimore, Baltimore and, and all around the world participated in a global strike to raise awareness and to spurn action to combat climate change. And this action was inspired by the work of Greta Thunberg. Greta is a 16-year-old activist, and I think she is a prophet. She is the one who spoke at the UN Climate Action Summit in New York recently, and she is the one who is chastising us and chastising our generation for being so selfish. And we deserve it. We are guilty of neglect and passivity. The time is now to wake up and get to work. Well, you probably know that our community has been acting on issues of climate change for quite some time. Perhaps you remember that Bishop Sutton was elected the Bishop of Maryland over 10 years ago, partly because of his focus on caring for the environment. He still likes to joke that he is Maryland's first green bishop. <laughs> and we have worked to reduce our carbon footprint right here in this building through the installation of geothermal heating and more recently the conversion of all of our lighting throughout the building to LEDs. And we've also been working on issues around clean water. We have installed rain gardens and rain columns to help reduce our water runoff. We are making small gains. But there is so much more to do. So today I am proud to announce that we are embarking on a new Creation Care initiative. As a part of the Open Doors, Open Hearts project, that's what we're going to be talking more about at lunch today, part of that project is to turn our green space into a center for education about the environment. We have an untapped resource here. We have 11 acres of property on this site, and more than half of it is green space. How many of you have recently taken a, a tour through the property? Well, if you haven't had a chance yet to go, there'll be some more chances later on this month. Because we're offering guided tours throughout the property because you have to see it to imagine what's possible. Well, back in February, it seems like a long time ago now, but back in February, as part of our cathedral leadership retreat, we took 50 members of the congregation and we toured the property with members of the Creation Care team. And we imagined what might be possible. 
We wondered, now what would it take to build a spiritual pathway through the property, a place for education and wonder? What would it take to create a place of learning about the importance of native species of plants and trees and flowers? On the simpler side, wouldn't it be nice just to have some walking paths and some benches to sit on so you could sit in the beauty of creation and just reflect? Then thinking a little bigger, wouldn't it be nice to have an outdoor labyrinth that we could use for meditation and for prayer? Imagine a defined path with instructions for a guided meditation about creation. Or simply just a place to take a stroll and relax in a beautiful setting. We imagined easier access with entrances that invite you in. We imagined encountering special gardens along the way, some that we've already built, and some that we might build over the next 10 or 20 years. And we wondered how the cathedral might become a center of learning about water stewardship. So many wonderful ideas were generated that day. And there's much more I want to say about this initiative, but I'm going to save it for lunch. So stay and have lunch with us and hear more about it. Because we also have some pictures to share, pictures that were created by a landscape designer of what she imagined our property might look like in a few years. But this project is about much more than just improving our property. And we selected St. Francis Day to launch Open Doors, Open Hearts, because we feel God is calling our community to become a leader on this issue. We want to set a new standard for how faith communities engage on environmental issues. There is a lot of work to do, but we are poised to take it on. Protecting the earth and all of her creatures will require vision and investment. And I think we can provide both. So what we need to do is we need to have an open heart and an open mind. Because this is how God guides us in our work. We need to pay attention to the signals that are coming our way try to discern what God is calling us to become. And some of us have been involved in these conversations for years, but there are others who are just, just now hearing some of the ideas that have emerged. So in the days and the weeks ahead, please be open to learning more about our aspirations and our goals. Our goals are ambitious, but they are attainable. And with your help, open doors and open hearts will inform and inspire our community for many, many years to come. I want to close now with some words from Greta Thunberg. She really is an amazing young person. And these come from her TED Talk. She did a TED Talk back in November of of 2018, and I'll put a link to it up on my Facebook page. Greta says at the end of her TED Talk, I'm coming to the end of my talk, and this is where people usually start talking about hope. Solar panels, wind power, circular economy, and so on. But I'm not going to do that. We've had 30 years of pep talking and selling positive ideas, and I'm sorry, but it doesn't work. Because if it would have, the emissions would have gone down by now. They haven't. And yes, we do need hope. Of course we do. But the one thing we need more than hope is action. Once we start to act, hope is everywhere. So instead of looking for hope, look for action. Then and only then, hope will come. She said, today we use 100 million barrels of oil every single day. 
There are no politics to change that. There are no rules to keep that oil in the ground. So we can't save the world by playing by the rules, because the rules have to be changed. Everything needs to change, she said, and it has to start today. Thank you, Greta Thunberg, for these prophetic words. Amen.